you are a fraud. Those people you compare yourself to are every bit as superior as you believe them to be. They belong there. They know more than you. And you're just simply not that clever. Why bother? Give up. Go home. It's not worth it. Quit while you're ahead. This is how you speak to yourself. If you think you're going to be found out and thrown out of your workplace. This is how you speak to yourself. When you think you're a phony, but all of the evidence says otherwise. This is how you speak to yourself when you're suffering from the imposter phenomenon. Around five years ago, before I was an academic or a leader, an author or an entrepreneur, I was a young professional making my first move in the workplace. My thoughts of the imposter phenomenon almost made me quit before I got started. I almost gave up on my career before there ever was one. I almost gave up on myself. It took me a really long time to understand that these thoughts of the imposter phenomenon, they can be managed, not dismissed, not destroyed, not crushed, not cured. They can be managed. In my latest book, You Are Not A Fraud, I invite you to come with me as I share some of the hidden data behind the imposter phenomenon. I invite you to come with me as I tell you the story of how I learned to manage the imposter phenomenon. I tell you the stories of how we all can understand that it's not the imposter syndrome. We can all understand what true imposters are. We can understand how to avoid useless comparisons between ourselves and other people. We can all understand the incredible unlikeliness that any of us are ever here at all. We can all understand how the imposter phenomenon might always be with us, but it shouldn't stop you from doing exactly what you want to do.